I want to talk about um, EFI carburetor. I asked for some questions earlier in the uh, earlier in the week from folks that they want to talk about on the live stream, and I got a few of them. A um, uh, couple from Instagram, a couple on Reddit, um, a couple on my uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, oh, what's the community tab? Um, and uh, the most requested thing was talk about why somebody would go from carburetor to EFI or why they wouldn't want to use EFI. Why would they want to stick with a carburetor? And it's a really good topic. I've, ta I've thought about it for a while. I just didn't know how to approach it. So I guess the, the best way to do it is just kind of jump right in with it and... Um, you know, talk about the pros and cons of it, and and hopefully, uh, um, you know, it'll be something worthwhile for you and something to learn. So there's a couple of cool things. One, that is the ProFlow 4 uh, from Edelbrock. Um, that is for a Windsor. So you Ford guys, uh, please don't accuse me of never talking about Ford stuff and only talking Chevy because that is for a 351. Very cool kit. Um, certainly one of the most complete ones on the market. Um, you know, comes with the throttle body, comes with the fuel rails, injectors. Uh, there's a couple of different kits depending on the horsepower, um, what size injector you get, but injector always uh, dictates uh, what the throttle body or what the kit will support. It's not rated in CFM, it's rated in horsepower, and that's where they get it from is the injector. So um, I believe there's a couple of different kits for everyone. I know on the small block, big block Chevys, there's multiple kits, uh, LS kit, um, but I'm pretty sure they have it on the uh, on the the Fords and stuff as well. You just have to kind of look on their website, take a look at it. But um, intake manifold, you get a brand new one of those. Um, all the sensors, um, uh, new distributor, um, which is kind of cool. I guess distributors in the front on a Ford. I keep forgetting that, um, but that's kind of cool. Um, very very nice setup. Very very inexpensive too. Um, the, I can't remember what the retail price is on these, but really when you factor it all in together, what you're getting, it's a pretty, pretty doggone, uh, good deal. So, um, just kind of a, kind of a cool, uh, you know, cool setup for, uh, for those folks that are, that are looking for a, a, a complete EFI setup. And I'm going to talk about why I like a port style versus a throttle body style here in a minute because there's some really distinct differences between the two um, so anyway I'm gonna pop here uh, <laughs> I guess we'll have to do it this funny way just to make sure that the audio is good uh, sound is good all right cool well I kind of hate to do this but like I said I don't have access to look at the chat i'm gonna to to figure out a different way of doing that but again it's just the obs software i'm not used to using i've only used it once so let's quickly talk about <sighs> it, it, we'll finish up that discussion here so anyway that completes that kit's very complete i know edelbrock's going through some changes with it right now so like right now it comes with a seven inch tablet i don't think i've got that I don't have the tablet here, um, but I think the new kits don't come with the tablet because, let's be honest, everybody in the world has a cell phone or a tablet anyway, and most of the time people ask, can they get it without the tablet? And I think to reduce the number of part numbers, um, it's a manufacturing thing, um, they'll they'll take that the tablet out of there, and then you can purchase it standalone if you want. Uh, that way you can just tether it through your phone. Um, they've got apps for iOS and Android. So pretty simple. You just go into the, that app store, marry it up with the information that they give you, and it talks to the ECU. And, uh, yeah, pretty simple setup. So I've installed a couple of these, uh, but they were early. Um, this one's the first one I've had my hands on in probably a year and a half uh, eventually the GMC truck will get a uh, will get this uh, EFI setup I'll put a carburetor on to start and then uh, then yeah we'll 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 go EFI to uh, you know to try, kind of play with it a little bit 
we'll talk a little bit about the the, the this type of EFI because it's a little bit different for me personally um, and, and we'll talk about that in the pros and cons type of deal but I guess the first thing really is is what it boils down to and, and I had a nice discussion a couple of them today with folks who left some comments um, you know that they only use carbureted it's easy it's simple um, and I don't disagree uh, it's a great point um, typically on a carbureted setup it's always going to be cheaper um, even at a 2100 bucks or 2000 bucks whatever that thing ends up costing you for that setup um, yeah on a carbureted setup it's significantly cheaper um, you know your the cost is cheaper on everything it's fairly easy to tune I guess if you actually tune the doggone thing and that's the big problem with carburetors is man guys talk a big <laughs> talk a lot of smack about how how they're, they're great with their carburetor it worked awesome right out of the box whatever and all they're doing is farting around with the idle mixture screws and that's it they've never popped the bowls off to change the the power valve or the the jets on a holly or they've never had the top off off the edelbrock carburetor they're just driving around and and masking any of the actual tuning issues if they actually take the dog on time to tune it a carburetor works really well it meters f fuel exceptionally well now there's ethanol and everything else that kind of throws some monkey wrenches into that equation but i very 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 rarely talk to folks at car shows or you know folks that contact me email whatever that that have issues and, and want to see if I can give them some guidance or you know offer some suggestions that have actually done any tuning on it and it's terrifying um, there's so much horsepower being left on the table because people are just not willing to actually tune their carburetor um, they just don't know how or they just assume hey I both on it fired up is running I kind of fired with the timing and the idle mixture screws the speed screw dude it's awesome it's great no you haven't done anything to it so if you actually tune a carburetor, yeah, they're fine. Um, they're they're dumb. They're they're an analog piece. They're just going to keep dumping fuel, and that's the nice thing about a carburetor is they're fairly um, they mask a lot of sins, uh, as as you would say. Um, you know, you don't get a lot of those negative effects um, because it just if it keeps dumping fuel, well, then you'll continue to make power. Now you're gonna do some other crappy things but that will hide a lot of the, the problems that you're having we're on an EFI setup if you have that incorrect not on these self-learning type setups but on a actually laptop tunable if you don't correct the fuel curve if you don't correct timing to go along with it it's not going to run right so these tend to hide a lot of problems so it's one of the nice things about running a carburetor now why would you run an EFI system over a carburetor um, again same thing right there the nice thing about the self-learning stuff is you don't have to be a tuner now I've spent a lot of years with this I've gone to enough classes and you know worked with HP tuners I worked with some of the um, you know the companies as they were coming out with throttle body EFI stuff over the years I've had that, that opportunity as a representative within within the industry to be able to do it um, so I've had my hands on a lot of them and the self-learning stuff these days is pretty doggone good um, software is awesome there's not a lot of uh, um, you know work that you have to do on the back end it's they're they're pretty amazing to be honest with you but the, the, the hardware caught up with the software side of things, wideband O2 sensor instead of a narrow band uh, was probably one of the biggest jumps in technology that that whole setup saw. Plus, you know, having good sensors that are available at, at fairly decent prices that, are, um, that can be used throughout the, you know, throughout any kit. It doesn't matter if that's a GM sensor and that's a Ford intake. It could care less as long as the computer keeps re reading the signal it needs to get from it that has got good fuel pressure great let's go keep keep building power let's let's continue to go you know temperature sensor it doesn't matter so um kind of a nice thing but uh um you know efi setups on the self-learning type are 
once you once you get it all the hardware bolted down once you get the the cables run and and get everything set up find a spot for the ecu most of these it used to be in the old days um, you know five six years ago you needed a couple hundred miles of good driving on it um, before it would really learn itself through where you're at elevation and all that the edelbrock has i think over 30 calibrations maybe i'm wrong in that i think it might be more um, but 30 different calibrations. So as you go into the uh, the tablet, and I wish I would have would have uh, had one, but I'm shooting this on my cell phone, so <laughs> that's where my I usually check comments. So I'll have to pop onto the laptop here in a minute and play with it. But but uh, you know, once you put in the basic information, number of cubic inches, approximate horsepower, headers, no cam profile. There's enough curves or or map programs within the ECU well, let me grab that that's the size of the ECU on that's very very small very very easy to hide away you know I've got small hands and you know medium sized hands I guess um, if that tells you how big that is so it's pretty hideable anywhere but there's enough of those that are in that that um, ECU that there's not a lot of learning time within maybe an hour or two it's pretty well sorted out what you need um, so uh, these things fire up right away they idle pretty nice right away because there's a lot of already pre-figured out uh, maps within there and I know Edelbrock continues to add to that so the longer you go and the more software updates the more those are are, are included in there the the better these will run out of the box and that kit works really 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 well right out of the box so some of the other throttle body efi stuff you may still have to put a few miles on it before it uh um, you know operates correctly but uh um, those are pretty pretty awesome with that and that's a big plus with that um those don't stink up your garage they you know with a carburetor and fuel evaporating out of it because the ethanol um everybody's lived with that carburetor you know a garage that stinks like fuel all the time because the fuel tanks either vented incorrectly or you know you drive a hot car into the garage shut it off and you know go grab a few adult beverages and enjoy the rest of the day or evening or whatever and go back out a couple hours later and the whole garage smells of fuel you don't have that with a, with an efi setup so it's a it's a nice benefit especially if your garage is attached to your house and you know your kitchen or your living room or your bedroom or whatever stinking up the fuel so it, it's one of those little things to to think about here's the one thing i i hesitate to even bring this up because the problem with it is, is is you get a lot of people that that think they know a little bit more than what they do but in reality you are not going to see a huge jump in fuel economy between a well-tuned carburetor and i have to caveat that that most aren't but a well-tuned carburetor and a throttle body efi if you get one to two miles per gallon out of it that's pretty doggone good um, the reason being is because and I did a video on this several years ago where I kind of, you know, demonstrated this. Um, you know, go, what's in your what's in your parking lot right now for a new vehicle? Most modern vehicles these days are coming with a 8 or a 10 speed transmission. Some of them are still 6 speeds, but the reason why the OEs keep throwing gears in the transmission, it's not because they want to keep throwing money at it. They want to control their costs. If they could, they would probably still run 4 speeds in there. But the reason why they, they put more gears in there is because it lowers the operating RPM of the engine. And when you do that, you, you use less fuel. So I demonstrated that in a, in a video on why the transmission is where you get your fuel economy from. It's not the carburetor. It's not the EFI system. So you'll get a, a little bit out of it. Don't get me wrong. But don't expect to bolt that on and go from 10 miles per gallon to 15 or 20 or, or higher you're just not you may see one or two and that's about it um, if you get more than that well it's probably because the carburetor was bad but transmission is where you pick up most of your fuel economy so i don't want to argue about that one but it's it's certainly one that people talk about as being a, a benefit to the throttle body efi or the 
you know, the self-learning type EFI stuff, and I don't disagree with it, but same with an LS. I love the LS engine. Don't don't get me wrong. It's it's one of the greatest advancements that, that Chevrolet has done since they built the small block Chevy, but it's not the LS that's giving you all the fuel economy. Yes, it's giving you some, but transmission, lower the operating RPM, you're not going to use as much fuel. It's just simple math. So anyway, don't want to get too stuck on that, but um, you know, depending on how you drive too. I mean, most carburetors, especially the Edelbrock style, most of the stuff that folks, Edelbrock's a little bit different because it does support up to a thousand horsepower in some applications with a different injector in it, but a regular throttle body like the, that fast, um, you know, most people are out there driving it with the, with the gas pedal on the wood all day long. So, I, I mean, I do, but I'm an idiot, so <laughs> you're not going to get, you know, a lot of a fuel economy when you're driving like a moron, but that's a factor. So, um, anyway, it's, I don't want to get too, you know, into the weeds on that one just simply because, again, a lot of it, I can probably get you more fuel economy out of a regular carburetor, even a Holley, um, if it's just tuned right. But, again, most people don't tune them right, so it is a bit of an issue the long-term consistency of an of this type of EF, afi setup is always going to be far superior to a carburetor now I'm, i know i'm going to catch um some heck for that one but it's just a fact um the longer a carburetor sits the worse off it gets um if i'm down here at uh you know, I don't even know what the elevation here is, uh, just outside of Memphis, Tennessee, but uh, it can't be more than 1,000, 1,200 foot above sea level. But if I was to drive from here to Denver, um, or worse, Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is way higher up in elevation than Denver is, um, that carburetor is going to run differently. With a throttle body EFI setup, or a, a port style EFI, or an LS with a factory EFI setup, you're not going to run into those issues. Um, it will continue to correct itself and pull fuel or, or give it fuel as you need it. And the carburetor doesn't do that. So it's just those will consistently be so much easier. Just get in, hit, run, drive. Cold start issues are fewer. Hot start issues are fewer with that because it overcomes a lot of that. Hot starts, especially after you've been driving, and, and again, I did a video on, on hot start uh, or heat soak, and, you know, the longer that sits, um, <laughs> you know, when you go out and drive for an hour or whatever and pull over to grab a burger or a Coke or hang out with, at your buddy's house or whatever, and then everybody decides to go cruise for a little while together, that's the reason why the fuel boils over, it's ethanol's garbage it's horrible for fuel that alcohol burns up it dumps that fuel where it can and that's right down into the intake manifold and they're hard to start they're flooded you know all the issues i'm sure everyone here has probably lived with that but you never have that on there it's just get in hit the key and go so there's a lot of benefits to that so and that's part of the reason why you wouldn't run a carburetor. Um, most people don't know how to tune one. And I, I hate to be very blunt with that, but I think it's part of the reason that channels like myself and, and other folks that, that do really good carburetor tuning. Um, what's that kid's name? And I really apologize. I, I probably should be better at this, but I'm not. Um, he's a Ford guy. Thunderhead 289, I think is his name. Great channel. Good content. Good carburetor guy. Very good at tuning. Very good at understanding that carburation and ignition go hand in hand when you're working together. Very smart kid. Uh, kind of admire what he's done with his channel and certainly has a lot of followers, but he's the exact same way. Um, you know, if you get these tuned correctly, great. But I think he would probably argue the same that I would, that most people don't know how to tune a carburetor. Even guys have been doing this for 40 years, and that's all I've had my hands on is a carburetor. Great. Tell me how you tuned it. Again, idle mixture screws and very, very little after that. Or they put in the same jets and power valve that their buddy's car had, and, man, it runs like I'm out of hell. Okay. 
get it in tune at all. So it's okay. It's it's not a again. That's what a carburetor does. It tends to mask some of those sins where an EFI system will will tell you you've got a problem. So. Um, Another reason of why you wouldn't run a carburetor, again, that, that you know, driving from sea level or, or here in Memphis up to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where you go to almost 7,000 foot of elevation uh, at some places in that town, you're going to have to continue to adjust that carburetor. It's either going to be really rich or really lean wherever you're at, and you're going to have to keep playing with it. It's one of the reasons why people don't want to run a carburetor anymore. Um, the limited things you can control on a carburetor it's like what i've always said in my fuel system videos run a regulator run these filters um here's the setup uh, run a return line if you can the reason why we put in those extra little adjustment points in there is because a carburetor doesn't have that many when you really boil it down it's got idle mixture it's got speed it's got the uh the um, cam for the you know the uh, choke to run at a little bit higher rpm you've got rods or jets or power valves or whatever it is and that's it you don't have a ton of other points within there within an efi system within a tunable efi system i won't talk really too much about self-learning there you've got so much more control over what you're doing so um so again one of the nice things about a, a efi setup um we talk about control and the sins of that, you know, that carburetor. Another thing that comes to mind is, you know, when you're dumping a lot of fuel in it, it's always stinks. It's pig rich. The guy behind you driving is like, damn, man, I spilled gas the whole way here. No wonder you're stopping at every gas station you, you drive by. You're always fouling plugs. You're always ruining your oil. The reason why most hot rod guys change their oil so frequently is because it's diluted with fuel. Fuel breaks down the, the, the additive package in there. And that's a really good place to stop for just a quick second because I'm going to let you guys know um, that next week's video is going to be the first interview that I'm going to do with an industry um, uh, manufacturer. Um, and that will be with Driven Racing Oil. A good friend of mine works there. Uh, he's been there for quite a long time, worked with Lake Speed Jr. when Lake was, uh, you know, doing all the work there. Um, Lake's a great guy as well. Uh, but uh, David's his name, and I'm, I'm sitting down with him to interview him this week and uh, eagerly looking forward to that because he will give you some things to think about when it comes to oil. Um, and I absolutely love the way Driven looks at oil. They don't look at brand first. They want to know what it's being used for. Let's talk about chemistry and what you need first, and then we'll figure out what oil needs to go with it. So, again, oil's another topic that's... Seems like it's a little taboo, but we'll talk about that here uh, here uh, next week. So I'm eagerly looking forward to that. That will be a really, really, really good video. I don't know how many people will watch it or be excited, but I will tell you that I am very... It's one of the most exciting videos that I've done since I did the the fuel filter test and, and the one on... Um, uh, break in lubricants and, and I've done some really good videos I've been personally proud of my trip to uh, Saudi Arabia two years ago my god nobody watched that video it was one of the coolest things I've ever done since I've been in this been in this business but um, yeah nobody watched it so <laughs> but anyway that's coming up next week so um, I don't know where I left off we were talking about why you wouldn't run a carb I think but uh, yeah well, it's been a minute or two. Let me, I'm going to look at the comments, so I'm going to jack all this up here. So uh, Let's see if I can look at it here. Let's see here. Do a video on this topic. I probably will. Um, it just I, I've got some detail that I would like to cover with this to get a little bit more, a little better with it, but... Uh, yeah, absolutely. I probably will. But I, I wanted to do a live stream because I, I like talking with you guys. It's always cool to get your comments and all that. So, a dog. the answer to that is absolutely yes. Uh, yeah, Bert, I'm going to disagree with you, bud. And I appreciate the comments you've left on some things. But, uh... uh I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused at, at uh, 
um, where you think you're going with some of these things. But I appreciate your insight. Uh, if you really tr truly did work for Carter back in the day, uh, back there in St. Louis, I'm sure you've got a ton of information uh, that would be good. But, uh, yeah, um, have to be careful. We want to want to continue to give folks information that they need and not, uh, you know, give them stuff that's outdated. So um, certainly some of the stuff back in that time when uh, Carter was developing that in the, well, when was that, late? Early 60s, late 50s, I don't even know when it was. It doesn't really matter at this point. But, uh, you know, ethanol uh, has, has changed a lot of that. There's, you know, the way these carburetors, it's the reason why EFI, it's the reason why we went from a carburetor to a throttle body EFI to a port style EFI to now direct injection is because we're trying to get better at it. The carburetor is very good at what it does. Um, but again, it hides a lot of sins. And... You have to be a little careful with, uh, um, you know, offering up some uh, advice on things when the game's changed. So, anyway, I am going to, uh, I have to be careful here. For whatever reason, YouTube doesn't like this, so I'm just going to sneak this in here. Yeah, it's shock top tonight. So, anyway, hope you all are doing well. Let me wet my taste buds here. Ah, cool. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> I do like the orangey taste of that. It's very, very cool. So, um, let's see, where did we leave off? I guess we were talking about why you would or wouldn't run. Uh, here's a really good one. I think let's talk about EFI because why wouldn't you run this style of EFI? And, and I'm going to... I'm going to clarify a couple of things here because it's pretty important. There is not any system that is better than the other. There is nothing here on this bench that is better, better than this Edelbrock. <clears throat> there is nothing better on this bench than it's better than that fast. I've got a Holly over there uh, that's for the Chevelle. They're all situational. Um, that's really the bottom line, the, the whole secret to all of this stuff is it there's no best camshaft for a 351 Windsor if there was there'd be one part number no one would run anything else it's the only thing anybody would make because why would you make any other grind for that engine you only use that part number camshaft it's the best of the best of the best end of the story what rear end gear ratio is the best if there was only one then there why would a manufacturer make any more they would only make that one rear end ratio and that's it. How tall a rear tire? If there was only one dimension on that that was awesome, it wouldn't matter. You know, what's the best make of car? Well, it's obviously Chevelle, but I guess that's a bad example. But maybe that one's a bit of a stretch. So, um, But you see where I'm going with that. So these are all situational. Depending on what you are using it for is what works best. The Edelbrock is absolutely brilliant at what it does if you put it in that right situation. Same with the Holly. It's an absolutely brilliant for what it can do, provide the horsepower it makes. It is an absolutely mindless machine of dumping awesome amounts of fuel at something, and it does it brilliantly. It does it better than the Edelbrock, so why would you put the Edelbrock in that situation? Why would you put a Holly in this, in this situation? It doesn't make sense. So... As long as it's a good brand name, it's not the Chinese knockoff stuff, and I'm not going to start naming brands, but mostly all that tried the, you know, $1,000 throttle body stuff five, six years ago, seven years ago, whatever, learned that pretty quickly that, <clears throat> well, it's just, it, it may have worked for a little while, or it may have worked perfectly, or it may not have worked at all, and, well, you see the results of that. People are flying out the door to get rid of them and go to another brand, so... Um, I don't talk about those. It's just, there's no reason to. But that's the really the bottom line of all of this stuff is if you put any of these in the right situation, they will do exactly what you ask them to do. If you put them in the wrong situation, oh, that Edelbrock carburetor's junk. It's horrible. Oh, Holly's terrible. All it did is flood and whatever. I, I'm, I, you've all seen the comments on social media and whatever so 
Um, you have to be, you have to put them in the right situation. When you do that, they're all going to work awesome. So that's the cool part about it. Um, what else do we want to talk about tonight? Um, these are self-learning units. I don't dislike them. There is a place for them. There's a, just like there's a place for an Edelbrock carburetor uh, and a demon or, well, maybe not a demon, but you get the drift. There's there's a place for everything. And the self-learning stuff, especially that the ProFlow 4, that, that software and the hardware that comes in that kit works brilliant. Um, They've really knocked that out of the park. I, I, I talked to the EFI engineer quite a few years ago um, when they were developing that, and I think it came from a developer that did F1 software and, and stuff for McLaren or one of those. It's They're from Italy, um, and they've got it dialed in, and boy, when you put it in, in that situation, <laughs> it does really well. But I'm more of a laptop tunable type of guy. Not for any other reason that the stuff that I like to build doesn't really fit into a self-learning unit. Great unit. Same with the Fast, even though those have been out for quite a long time. The Fast was probably the original folks that were doing that throttle body EFI out there that went to mass market. Um, hasn't been updated in quite a long time, but uh, works really well but i'm more of a laptop tunable type of guy i want control over it that's the beauty of efi is to have control over the fuel table and be able to, to manipulate things through the entire rpm range that's what's awesome about them um, you can do that a little bit with a carburetor but you tend to be either on the fat side or on the rich side and and they can they work really well but give me an EFI all day long I don't with all the carburetor stuff that I've done on this channel I don't want that to seem like that's all I ever do and you know it's the only thing I recommend again they're all situational there are some things that I would tell you that absolutely put that ProFlow 4 on hands down 100% and there's others I go you know what it just doesn't fit your budget that's the big downfall of EFI systems is even though that kit with the, the throttle body, the rails, and manifold, all the hardware sensors, new distributor, um, again, really cool piece to that is it comes complete. Uh, but you still have a fuel system that you have to buy. And when you buy a pump, buy a regulator, um, buy filters, figure out what you're going to do, whether a turn line or not, that's where it becomes expensive. So that $2,000 kit now becomes 3000 maybe more depending on how aggressive you get with the fuel system but yeah it's not cheap <laughs> when you talk that and you've got to be willing to make that investment in it and if you're not willing to make it that's fine there's awesome carburetion stuff that's on the market that'll help you so it's it's a it's a big it's a big point of you know deciding on what you want to use based on yourself so anyway I'm going to rack it up here and see if, look at the comments one more time. So I apologize. This is kind of kind of weird. But again, that was me screwing this up and not being. Yes, you can use an electric fuel pump with a carburetor. Um, I, I, I told you guys over and over again, and, and I hope it doesn't sound like a, um, I don't want to sound like a homer here, but. I love the aeromotive stuff. Um, <coughs> not two feet away from me, buried in a tub that I can't get to, is a couple of carbureted um, fuel inject or uh, uh, regulators that I use. Love it because you can use a good in tank pump, which is hands down, if you can afford it, if you can do it, um, if you got a tank that will accept it. Um, or that's been built for it by Tank Sync or one of the other tanks that are out there. Absolutely, a hundred times out of a hundred, I'll tell you, put the pump in the tank. Get it off the engine, get it away from the heat, protect it. That's why every vehicle in the parking lot at the Win Dixie or Piggly Wiggly or Walmart or Kroger or wherever, well, that's <laughs> newer anyway, has the pump in the tank. And the reason being is because it's the best place to put it. So even though the pressure is much higher 
always put the pump in the tank and yes you can get a regulator to regulate down the the chevelle that's behind me um the the gmc truck that's outside freezing its butt off here in the 30 degree weather that we've had here in in uh in memphis um does not have but the um the chevelle had um the last thing that came out of there before the big blocks going in was an ls and uh yeah it's it's completely um I have to regulate it down to go to a carburetor because that's what I'm going to fire the car up on. I'm going to put the 800 um, AVS2 on. I'm going to play with an 800 Holly on it for a while because I want to do some comparison stuff for you to, so you can see that. Um, I, I will run a dual uh, wideband O2 wireless from Fast. Um, I think I did a video on on the wireless AFR gauge. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, but that's the one I run. Um, I don't think I've got one here because I bought a single for. No, it's buried. I have a single uh, wideband O2 for the truck um, that I won't. It won't go with the truck when I sell it. It'll 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 remain here. But um, <clears throat> but yeah, I want to show the differences in, and then eventually, uh, I hate to tell you, the the big block will come out of the. Uh, um, the out of the Chevelle and, and I'll go um, I'll go uh, back to an LS in it but the fuel pumps gonna stay the same horsepower is gonna be about the same I'm looking at probably between 600 and 700 horsepower I can't go too much more than that right now I the transmission is not really capable of handling it I've got some older Mark Williams axles in the car um, that'll handle up to that, but if I start really beating the snot out of it, um, and, and big blocks are big blocks, they tend to produce a lot of torque, I will start twisting stuff off there, and, you know, breaking a, you know, $5,000 Tremec transmission is not my exact uh, idea of fun, so, <laughs> but again, it'll, it's, we'll keep that same pump in there, because when I go to an LS, I, I've built a thousand horsepower LS. I loved it, but for what that car is going to be in the future, I'm just going to put a, another, you know, 408, maybe just a regular six liter, six two in it, and that fuel pump will stay the same. It's just a regulator change. So, uh, Ram Truck, I think was the the username there. Um, absolutely, you can you can run a regulator um, for a electric pump, depending on how the pump's rated. Now, like I say. The, the, the pump I'm talking about, the in-tank stuff, again, because I'm an, I'm an Aeromotive homer. I love the brand. It's done really well for me. I lived in Kansas City for quite a few years there in Lenexa, Kansas. They are super, super good people. They are all racers. Um, they're engineers. Their owner, Steve Matuzak, or their previous owner, original owner, um, they sold it to Pertronics uh, a year or so ago, something like that. But... Uh, um, great folks, and so I, I trust them. I know them really well. There's probably other good fuel system stuff out there on the market, but uh, I'll be an Aeromotive homer uh, until they uh, give me reason not to be. So, um, yeah. So anyway, I hope that answered your question. Um, I, I did some fuel system videos as well too, where I covered a little bit of that, but uh, you don't need to go watch it. I just gave you all the answers. So, all right. Let me check the comments here again. <laughs> make your view look funny all right got a Russian hacker in there awesome renegades garage what's up man uh Jeffrey Myers considering throttle body what fuel pump system best um, yeah um, just kind of kind of go right back to what I was talking about there with uh, uh, with the, the Ram truck guy um, Again, I'll, I will always prefer that Phantom setup through um, through Aeromotive. Now, when you talk about a fuel pump and a fuel solution to go in tank, it's probably one of the more reasonably priced when you figure it. Um, I'm not talking about Rex or one of those $1,500 fuel tanks. God bless you if you want to buy one and you want to use one. I've got no issue with it. That tank is awesome. Those folks are incredible their customer service is top-notch there is nothing wrong or bad about that however <laughs> even for the Chevelle I'm not gonna spend that kind of money the Chevelle's got a gen 2 
uh, aeromotive tank in it and uh, um, yeah that's what I always recommend as a fandom uh, part number 18688 I think is the 300 and uh, uh, 40 uh, pump that comes in there um, they offer a 200 um, I think they still they offer a 400 as well but for most guys it depends on how much power you build depends on what size pump you're gonna put in there uh, but I prefer the Aramona Phantom stuff and uh, I, I've left tons of links of that in other description if you look at any of the fuel system videos I've done I guarantee you I've linked that kit in there because it's just awesome um, I'm always hesitant to tell you <laughs> what I know but I, I took a flight from uh, PRI when it was in uh, Orlando for a few years and on a flight home on a Southwest Airline flight I sat next, next to Steve Matuzak and we were complaining about fuel system stuff on the throttle body EFI stuff I can't remember what was out at that time maybe it was the MSD Atomic it had just come out 2000 to late 2010 it had been December 2010 maybe um, I'd have to go back and, and think about it but uh, he sat there and scribbled out the, his idea for a Phantom after listening to us complain about it because the throttle body EFI stuff was really starting to ramp up a little bit more aggressively, but the fuel system side wasn't. So um, if you get the fuel system right on either one of these type of setups, whether it's just the throttle body EFI where the injectors are in the, the, the throttle body um, or if it's a port style, you get the fuel system right, I can make the cheap Chinese garbage work pretty pretty well. Um, you get the fuel system incorrectly, I don't care how much money you spend on a kit, how much troubleshooting you do, you get the fuel system wrong, these will be garbage. So it's a great question. Um, I always put the pump in the tank. There's a million reasons why. But uh, I did a fuel system video not too long ago that talked about all that. Um, and then I did also one on uh, the tanks ink tank. Again, I'm a Chevelle guy, so I apologize. I always go back to it. But that tank had some starvation issues. The pump is in the front of that tank. So if this is the front of the car here, the tank's in the back. The pump is at the front. The bumper is back here. And when you launch the car hard, where's the fuel go? Back. Well, you starve the pump. And the Chevelle guys have griped about that for years that... You know, they get, if you're under half a tank or a quarter of a tank, you get starvation issues. Well, what do you do when you're at the drag strip? Almost always you, you run as le least amount of fuel as, as you can because why? It lightens up the car. Less weight means horsepower. So, um, but anyway, that's the reason why the Chevelle's got a Gen 2 aeromotive tank in it. They, they fix the placement of the pickup in there and that, that thing's brilliant. So, anyway, I hope that answers your question. I gave you a really, really, really long answer. So, all right, let me look back here in the comments. Uh, uh, uh. If you put the fuel pump inside the tank, install it as close as you can to the tank. Okay, that's really what I was talking about there bud gotta be careful let me scroll back up here can you guys see this the the OBS thing here I hate to do this but I think I got everybody's question CNC Auto Works hey man uh, I guess I missed you earlier or I did and I totally forgot I said hey I hope you're still here if you're not will pop onto your channel one of these days. If you haven't looked, seen uh, some of the stuff seen in Seattle Works, he's building a really cool Mustang. That guy's the epitome of somebody that's just going to do it. <laughs> Body work, engine work, that guy's awesome. So I think it's him and his kid, but cool Mustang they're building right now. So, uh, yeah, that's the other side of it is, uh, um, you know, big camshafts on these throttle body EFI stuff. Uh, they're a little, they're a little incumbent on on that signal from the manifold. So, yeah, big camshaft. They don't like it. But that that port style with a laptop tunable, no problem, easy. 
how's the GMC 10 speeder um I don't really care if YouTube gets mad at me I'm gonna show you my shock top again <laughs> For whatever reason, the last time I, I did a live stream where I had a lot of beer on here, uh, Justin from Montana um, sent me uh, a little deal to, to buy my beer this week. So, dude, I appreciate you if you're watching. Absolutely love you. Thank you for that. Um, the GMC is uh, um, doing okay, <laughs> but... Uh, it's developed a little bit of an electrical issue, I think, um, and I haven't. It's been too cold for me to get out there and really play with it. And I'm a small. Um, it's technically a two car, car garage that I'm in, but I just don't have the room with the Chevelle in here, all my tools, this workbench, a uh, couple on the other side. So, um, <clears throat> but that engine is starting to get <laughs> worn out. So I think the rebuild on that is coming sooner than later. I want to do that around. May, but uh, I think I will end up uh, getting the tank out, or the, getting the engine out of there, get it rebuilt, and uh, it's going to be very, very mild. I already uh, um, ordered the cam and, and lifter kit, the K kit for it, um, putting in a very, very mild extreme energy uh, setup from Comp. Um, it's just a good torque cam is all I'm looking for. I'm not looking to drag that truck past 5,000 rpm but yeah it's it's garbage so uh exhaust kits here headers have been here for a while did a video on that um and then yeah probably maybe here in a month or so um <clears throat> we'll get the engine out of there and uh get it rebuilt <laughs> and uh, get do that sooner than later again I, I was it was already something that was on the list of things to do i just didn't anticipate i was going to do that anytime soon so but yeah, get some good stuff coming with that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Just getting that thing. The, what I am going to do with that, and we talked about fuel economy for all these, um, it will remain carbureted. Um, I may put a little bit bigger carburetor on there. I'm going from a bone stock 350. It's got a 500 CFM AVS2 on there now, um, which tuned very well. Again, I owe you a video on that. Uh, but I've been trying to get caught up with, uh, I did the accelerator pump video last week. Um, I can't remember what I did the week before, but I wanted to give you some more content on th those little pieces within the tuning process because I wanted to I wanted to explain it to you instead of just going, oh yeah, and that's the accelerator pump, you just pop the rod out, put it in this hole, psh, done. <sighs> Shame on me because the videos sometimes are a little bit long and some people complain about that. But I, I can tell you what to do, but it's not going to always be the same for what you're working on. And I want you to be able to understand it all. So when it gets to that point, when you do it, you'll understand how those changes will affect what you're doing. And you can do it yourself. Um, that's the whole cool thing about YouTube and this type of community is learning things. I learn stuff from people every day. CNC Auto Works is a great uh, example of that. Um, I've watched a ton of that guy's videos over the last six, eight months. Um, Piss and Twisted uh, Garage up in Canada he did a really awesome live stream last night on a on a Triumph that he's tearing apart. Um, it just made me want a Triumph motorcycle, so that was dumb to watch it. But um, I learn every day from from you all. So don't think that I'm the subject matter expert here on everything. I just happen to have done this for a long time. I've been in the automotive aftermarket for close to 30 years. I know a lot of manufacturers. I know a lot of insiders. Um, I go to SEMA every year. I go to PRI every year. I go to some other trade shows just about every year. And I've had that opportunity because I've worked in the automotive aftermarket that I just know a lot of things. But I don't know everything about everything. <laughs> I, I can't put an automatic transmission together. I probably will. Um, uh, Hybrid Muscle Garage does some transmission rebuild stuff. He's done some tools on it. I know I know that guy's done a lot of transmission rebuilds. I don't recall watching a lot of videos on it, but another really good channel to check out if you want to see a different way. I've learned tons of stuff from him, too. So I don't care if I live to be 300 years, I'll, years old. I'll still learn stuff. So... Um, but back to the truck, um, the reason uh, also, too, uh, at the same time, I will do either a, I'm, I'm, I've been leaning towards a 700R4 in it, but to be very honest with you, 
those are also getting a little bit harder to come by. The Turbo 350s are very, very difficult to get a hold of. Power glides are still easy. C4s are practically impossible to get a hold of. There are certain cores out there that are very, very difficult to get a hold of. 700R4s are starting to get that way. So I may do a 4L60E in that truck and uh, and the small block and call it good. So it'll do that at the same time. Uh, transmission, the turbo 350 that's in the truck will come out. The, the 350 engine will come out. Uh, I don't know what kind of shape it's in. It'll get bored to what it needs. I'm not going to, I'm not looking to hot rod it. It'll, whatever it takes, just to get it back on the road. But it will get an overdrive transmission. All right, let me check the comments one more time, and then we'll wrap this up. Hey, Shopcat Industries. I met that guy, I hope it's a guy, last night on um, uh, Piss and Twisted live stream, so. Glad you're on, bud. Uh, oh, Ten Spirit, right? You must be in Memphis as well. That's where I'm at. I'm uh, just across the border in Olive Branch, so not too far away. Uh, EFI is expensive. Yes, sir, that is correct. Milwaukee, negative one degree. Ugh, Florida. Ugh. Ugh, 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 ugh. All right, well, I think I got everybody. Uh, Renegade's Garage, am I using StreamYard? I, um, I was talking to Mark at, um, at Piston Twisted, and he said he was using OBS, and that guy does some brilliant, brilliant work. I wish I had half the, uh, um, <laughs> half the, the, the capability of that guy does to deliver really beautiful content but he said use that he's using OBS I had OBS downloaded and so that's what I'm using it I don't know that I like it but it is what it is I just need now another monitor out here in the garage I guess and I'll do laptop and monitor so I can read the doggone comments without you guys you know seeing the OBS dash every time I look at it. I'm assuming you see that every time I go over there to read comments so anyway it's kind of ridiculous but it is what it is it's just because i haven't figured it out yet <laughs> so shame on me my my ankle still busted up from last saturday so i'm a little uh a little uh little sore from that but uh anyway um that's it i just wanted to hop on here real quick i absolutely love doing the live streams with you guys um I, it was my plan going into this year to do more of them you know maybe one during the week but um, I just didn't want to get on here for two hours, a bunch of mindless jabber back and forth. I want to give you some content because um, I know your time's precious. Mine is, and, and uh, I certainly don't want to take that away from you. Um, you know, uh, staring at that, that fast throttle body, it's one thing that I wanted to, to talk about, too. Somebody soon is going to make a better throttle body EFI, and here's the reason why I say that. There are some manufacturers that have the injector that is below the throttle blades okay like these those those bores there uh, that's where the, the injector squirts out of some of them have them above the throttle plates and again works well the problem with it is, is there's a lot of little little things with that that make the tuning a little bit difficult when you do a laptop tune and then especially on a on a self-learning tune I'm going to guess that Fast or Edelbrock or Holly, um, certainly not any of the Chinese knockoff companies are out there, but somebody's going to make a better throttle body for that in the next year or two. I just know it's, ha it's going to happen. Um, when that happens, these types where the injectors are in the throttle body instead of on the, the, the uh, multi-port sequential stuff here, um, it will make that a better throttle body. And I don't know if it's going to change the price or whatever. I'm sure it's going to be an offshore piece because you have to control that nobody's going to spend 3500 bucks on that anymore um, people expect to spend a thousand bucks on that and you know 12 1500 on, on a fuel system and that's it so but somebody's going to make one better and they'll figure out the injector thing they'll figure out the the bore size and how to how to drop it in there um, 
and it's, it's going to be eager to see that. We'll see what happens at SEMA next year, and that's usually the place where that type of product gets released. Uh, PRI doesn't typically get that type of product. It does, but they don't. They don't. Um, they don't showcase it there because PRI is more of the race industry. What is the race industry show? SEMA is more of everything. You get more media coverage there. So, um, but mark my words, within the next year or two, I would venture to guess you'll see a really awesome uh, EFI setup out there. So, anyway, cool. Well, I uh, hope things went well with this live stream. I do apologize. Um, I got to get this figured out. Uh, so, I'll try to do some testing this week and get this a little bit better. My plan is to do more of these because I, I like more of these interactive Q&As where we can do it right away because there's usually more people here and, and we can kind of all, you know, talk through it together. I can show you a few things. Uh, if I give you a topic of stuff to cover, um, you know, hopefully it'll bring your questions and we can, you know, talk about it and figure it out and we'll go from there. So I think I'm going to end this. I'm going to check the comments one more time. And then, uh, yeah, again, I apologize on this, but <clears throat> Tool Junkie, I haven't seen you in a while, bud. I hope you are doing very well, sir. Yep, stuck indoors. Oh. Cool. Never heard of OBS. I, I wish I'd never heard of OBS. It's a pain in the backside, so <laughs> anyway. All right, well, 